welcome to Primed for Battle. In today's video we're going to be painting one of the Hunters of Huanchi from the Age of Sigma Seraphon range. The paints that I've used are on the screen now and uh, this is a nice colourful but small model so let's get cracking. I start with a Wraithbone Prime and then to Blood Angel's red contrast over the entirety of the body. Don't worry too much if you get the straps and stuff, but you want to avoid the eyes where possible and the top of the head to the nose. So the face around the nose is fine and the eyes and mouth and stuff but the rest we're going to be coming back and doing some other colors on so worst case if you do get some red on those areas you can just go back over them with a um, bone or, or white um, later on to uh, to apply then contrast over the top of that so not the end of the world we can fix it up but just apply that over all the arms all the body the legs the hands the tail the scales on the back as well um, and uh, just watch out for this little frog on the side here he's got on his hip um, but uh, yeah next step we're going to use some proxagore scales we're just going to apply it to the recess of the head on top the, the recess of the crest i guess don't be too afraid to put a bit of contrast on there you don't want massive pool of it but doesn't matter too much if it gets a little bit and then what we're going to do is quickly change over to Coranderous Green and then apply that around the very edge of the ridge of the uh, chameleon skink um, on the edge of his head and if that if that bleeds into the proxigor scales a little bit then that's okay it'll just give it a little bit of a sense of uh, blending Take that around like so, around the top of the eyes, the nose. Like so. Just around the back of the head. Next up, we're going to use some Luxian purple and we're just going to apply that over the entirety of the eye. Again on the other side. All 
All right. And then what we're going to do is all of the areas that would be gold. So this would be the chest plate here. Uh, do the pipe. Uh, and on this one, darts just here above the frog and his wristband and ankle band and that looks to be about it on this one it's going to do those with wood as a base for our metallic paints I like to use browns as a base just find the gold comes out nicely over the top of the brown gives it sort of a little bit more of an earthy sort of tone I think so go through apply that to all those gold areas and then we will also do the tree branch that he's standing on uh, in wildwood as well Okay, now with that done, we're going to come through and we're going to do some Volipus Pink. I'm going to apply that just over the scales on the back, directly over the red. Just to give it a bit of a tone difference. And then we'll go right down all of those scales all the way down. And then what we're going to do is We'll do some plague bearer flip. I'm going to apply that over this poison toad. Back here. Start with. Do that fairly liberally to pull a bit. Plague bearer flesh is a fairly mild contrast so we're going to let that pull a little bit just to sort of really get into those details just clean your brush off a little bit and soak up any that's weeping down into the other areas Leave that like that for now. Now we're going to come through with Gut Ripper Flesh. And we're going to apply that over all of the... the loincloth around his waist. You want to make sure you get that from the rear as well. Again, apply that fairly heavily, so that will just fill the thing a bit more. And then come through with trusty old Gore Grunter fur. to do the 
straps. More ropes. Predominantly they are around the waist on this guy in the back. So they go around the back under the scales to secure the loincloth and the chest piece. Just in there. Red a little bit there. And that looks to be mostly it. I've just gone through with some warp lightning and just colored in those green leaves. And I think at that point you could leave that there and be happy with that. I think it looks pretty good. But we're going to come back and do a bit of additional detail. We're going to add some gold to the model and shade that. Uh, we'll probably do a little bit extra with the frog, the loincloth. Uh, and we're also going to add some stripes uh, to the back. Just to give it a little bit of extra pizzazz. So to get ready for the stripes... We're going to use a little bit of white. And we're just going to do some little lines. They don't have to be too neat. Great thing about Seraphon, I find is that because they're dinosaurs and they're living creatures, their uh, skin doesn't have to be perfect. A lot of their features don't have to be super neat. Just makes it nice and easy takes a little bit the pressure off the fine. Whereas uh, some other models, you're painting armor and things like that, there's a level of neatness that's sort of expected, but you would sort of expect to see in life. But this way we can sort of do a little bit more what we want. Have a bit of fun with it. On this step, we're going to do the gold details. This I'm using both as our gold. What we want to do is just get the chest plate guard. Get the main area of that doesn't matter too much if you leave a bit of brown in the recess, which is part of the reason why I love using brown as a base. So that uh, I think there's a bit of a natural looking shade, shadow effect, to the recesses of the gold. And it uh, means you don't have to be as neat with it. I like makes it make just a little bit easier. Take a little bit of the pressure. Painting's meant to be fun. And enjoyable. And relaxing. It is for me anyway. So that's what I sort of think about when I uh, decide on things. So just going to come through some of these bits on the pot and just
obtain some extra detail. And then there's a little charm on his waist here that we missed before. I think that's all the gold detail. Now over the white, I'm going to go back over these stripes with Pirandarus green again. With the red below it and around it. It really stands out. I think gives the model a very uh, exotic lizard look. What I've decided I'm going to do with the toad here, I'm going to get some caribou crimson and apply that over the entirety of this toad. I'm hoping it'll continue its sort of sickly color. And that's sort of a pale, pale fleshy color. That's not too bad. Once that's dry, we'll just come in with some white, get those eyes, and we'll maybe fill those in with a blue or a purple just to stand out. And now to finish off those gold details, it's going to come through with some Agrax Earth Shade. Could also do this with Nuln Oil or Reichland Flesh Shade. Even some of the fleshy shades of the contrast range, if you've got those. Give it slightly different tones to the gold, but um, we'll still shade it to similar effect. So if you're going to use the flesh contrast, I'd maybe water it down a little bit. Be a half half. Just so that it doesn't overpower it too much. I'm just going to go over all of that with the flesh shade. Earth shade, sorry. And... the straps and ropes and what as well and I'm gonna go over the cloth well this gives it a bit of a dirtier sort of look I will come through as well and get that rope on the toad that's uh, tied to his belt. I won't do the uh, shade over the tree. That'll give it a bit of a more of a gloss finish. Uh, so we may um, may just leave that. And again, I think at this point you could. Probably leave that again. I think overall it's looks pretty good. But there's a few more details that I'm just going to do 
just to sort of really make the model pop. Right, so I've put three paints onto my palette. I've got Wild Rider Red, got Troll Slayer Orange, and Luganath Orange. What I'm going to do just use this, starting with the Wild, Wild Rider Red. Just going to go through and highlight a few key areas. So, I'm going to start with the Wild Rider Red and just roughly get all of the raised areas so the the top of the thigh here back of the calf the bones that are protruding along the foot the knee the neck the cheek here the fingers biceps and raised areas of the arms on the wrist and you can see I'm just being fairly rough with it I guess Now I'm going to go through with the Roll Slayer Orange. This time, just picking out. A few of the raised areas. It's getting the edge of the tail, the very raised areas of the bone, the elbow, sort of working your way inwards, doing smaller and smaller areas. Just to sort of however you think looks good. Okay. Just some very small areas with the Luganath orange. Put it down a bit. goes on fairly thin. A bit too much. Wash my brush off a bit there. Wipe that away a bit. Plug enough is quite strong. So you want to use it fairly sparingly and Instance. 
it's like so. Looking pretty good. And the white. Just getting the eye of the toad. Get that. Around him there. Come in with some gore grunter. Fix that up. Boom. Gore grunter for the right. And what I'm also going to do is use some Goelia green shade. Just over the top of the head. And a little bit over the eyes is fine. I find that just sort of ties the colours on his head together a little bit better. I've just gone in with some Magrim Madroth Flame. For the eyes on the toad. And that about does it. Do the base up and he will be ready for the tabletop to blast your opponent with poison darts. And with that, our model is complete. I think he looks pretty stylish and is gonna be great on the tabletop in a little squad terrorizing your enemies as always if you could like and subscribe it really helps and i hope you enjoy and we'll see you next time on the battlefield bye now